So let's get started. Um, Kua, next slide. So here, um, so today we have um, several presenters. Uh, we have Chang, um, who is the Associate Director for PACE Operations. And then we have Kua, the Program Manager for Open University. And then we also have Anthony, um, also, who's also a Program Manager for um, Open University. And then we have Mike, um, who's a program coordinator, but unfortunately he uh, has a conflict, so he won't be able to join us today. And uh, we also have um, Christy, who's the operations coordinator, and myself, Cindy, um, I'm the marketing specialist for o uh, Open University. Um, so next we have Anthony. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. Hey, y'all. Um... This is Anthony. So this is a slide where I explain what what is what is San Jose State University Open University is. So it's a program for non SJSU students to take courses for college credit without formally admission to the university. So you know who might be you know lucky enough to take this advantage of this program, right? So you might be a formal SJSU student who is already graduated and working for a job but somehow wanted to explore a different field, you know, this might be a great program. Or if you're a student from another school, say college, even in high school, um, who wants to experience San Jose State University um, educations, right? And you might also be a community members, you know, just looking to look for a gain more knowledge uh, of whatever the field that you wanted to study on. Uh, this can be your uncle, aunt, your friend, your cousin, your neighbor, it could be anyone um, that, that wants to learn from San Jose State. And also, you know, we all go through a tough time in our lifetime. Uh, and if you're a student who has, a, who has been academically disqualified from San Jose State University, this program, program is an excellent opportunity to get yourself back into the system. So, you know, whoever you might be, join the program. Cindy or uh, Kwa, slide. All right. So hi, everyone. My name is Kua again. Um, so as Anthony mentioned, there are different types of students that uh, can attend Open University. And depending on the type of student you are as you're coming in, your registration will slightly differ. And so we do have six different student types. Uh, of students and they're put into three main categories. And so the first category are our first time students. Uh, the second category is our returning students. And then the third category is other. And so to uh, show you guys the six different types of students there are, um, I wanna take us to our website um, to show you what those student types are and then also give examples for each of them. And so to get to our website, you can scan the QR code that's on the screen or use the URL that's on the bottom here of the slide. Uh, please note that SJSU is experiencing some issues with uh, their website this week. So in the case you're not able to get to our website from the QR code or the link um, or the URL on the bottom right of the slide, in the chat, I'm going to put a direct link to our website. Um, please make sure to click on that link if you're not able to access it. And so let me go ahead and take this to our website now. So if you were to type in learn.sjsu.edu slash OU, you should get to our website. This is our website. And so from here, you want to scroll down. These are the three terms that OU is available for. Right now, we are doing enrollment for fall 23. So you wanna make sure you click on fall and spring. And then from this page, the very first bullet you'll see is how to register. So you will click on that. And so this is our registration page. You'll see three videos that are linked here on the very top. This shows a step-by-step -step visual of the registration process. I recommend students to uh, look through the videos or at least take a look at it once so that way you uh, can understand the process uh, from a visual point of view. I'm a visual learner. And so if this helps, I definitely recommend students to take a look at the video. 
And if you scroll further down, this is where you'll identify what your student status or type is. So the first category we're going to cover are going to be our first time OB University students. And there are three types of first time students. The first type of uh, uh, the first type of an OB University student is a first time OU student with no SJSU ID. So, for example, you could be a student who attends another university or college and you have no affiliation with SJSU. The second type is those who are first time stu uh, OU students, but you do have an SJSU ID. So this means that you have previously applied for admission at SJSU or attended SJSU previously at, at some point. And the third type of first time OB University students we have are those who have recently been disqualified from the spring 2023 term. Um, and these are uh, previously disqualified SJSU students. And so these three statuses cover the first category. The second category is our returning OB University student. And so as a returning OB University student, you would either had one, a recent enrollment within the year. So for example, you last took a class in uh, fall 22. Um, or the second type is uh, you're a returning student who has no recent enrollment within the year. So, for example, your last semester was in fall, uh, in spring 2021. It could be fall 2019. As long as it's longer than uh, one year, um, you'll fall into this bucket. And so the last category that we have is our other, which encompasses our students who have already graduated from SJSU or another university or college. So these are our graduate students. And so these are our six different student statuses. Um, as we're going through the presentation today, feel free to identify uh, which student status or type you are. And if you're not sure where you will fall into one of these, feel free to put it into the chat and we can also help you that way. And so I will now pass it to my colleague, Trang. Thank you, Ko. Uh, my name is Trang. Hi, everybody again. Um, Ace Kua mentioned that we have six different types of students that we can go to a different route of registration. We would like to get to know you a little bit more. So um, we're going to have a poll uh, with two questions um, so that we uh, could you uh, fill out and uh, we, we want to see who um, are you. I can see the answer coming in. So I give a little bit more time. Uh, we are we have 94% participate into the poll. So one last call for participation. So the result came in. The majority of students um uh First time OU, I'm gonna share the result for you. So the majority of students are first time, so I'm sure that you have a lot of questions. So uh, throw the, uh, please uh, post your question at the chat uh, anytime. And uh, at the end of this uh, presentation, we're gonna have time for you just uh, if you want to post uh, any direct question. To Asian and fee for open university, uh, we charge by uh, unit. The total cost will be calculated by multiply uh, the fee with number of unit that you enroll. So you don't have to pay any other mandatory campus fee. But some of the class may have material fee that your department access. So that's going to be additional cost. In spring, fall, and winter, 
the cost for open university class is $280 per unit of lecture or seminar, $291 for activity and $375 for lab. For the summer, we charge a little bit different. The cost will be by your academic level. If you are an undergraduate student, the cost gonna be $350 per unit. Uh, why post back and graduate student will pay $430. So it's the same rate for whether a three unit lecture or three unit lab across the board. Let's take an example. In this fall, if you enroll in English 1A, a three unit lecture class, it will cost you $840 because if you multiply 280 by three, it's gonna have that uh, $840. Another example is a CAM 1A class. This class have a total of five units, but it's breakdown is three unit lecture, one unit seminar and one unit lab. The total cost will be 280 times four plus 375 for the lab. And then the total will come up to 1,495. We don't have financial aid available for open university program, but you can check with financial aid office for some student loan if you need it. And we will share with you the uh, contact information at the end of the presentation. Thank you. Uh, please, Christy. Thank you, Trang, and hello, everyone. If there is one page that I would highly recommend bookmarking, it is our calendar. It contains all of our important dates and deadlines that you need, such as the first and last day to add and drop classes, as well as payment deadlines. Um, so mark uh, this date on your calendar. The first day of instruction and registration starts on Monday, this upcoming Monday, August 21st. Another item that is also highlighted on calendar is our waitlist period. So the waitlist period is during the first week of the semester and ends on Monday, August 28th. During this time, you can add yourself to the waitlist for classes that are full. An event that seats become available, you'll be, you will then be able to enroll. Okay, so moving on. To help you prepare, uh, we have a few tips and tidbits to share with you. Um, if there are classes you are really interested in, please email the instructors before the first day of class. This helps them know what to expect in terms of enrollment. There are a few classes that are in high demand and fill up quickly, such as business, engineering, and social sciences, and so on. In the event that your initial choices are unavailable, you may want to have some backup classes. There are certain types of classes that are not available to OU students. These include internships, supervision, classes, and independent study. Enrollment times may vary, so depending on how and when you register, register and what approvals are needed. Graduate level classes um, require prerequisites and must be approved by the graduate admissions and program evaluations. So students must use the OU enrollment form for this. If you, have if you have been recently disqualified and need support and guidance, please meet with your Student Success Center. COVID vaccination attestations. Um, all students enrolled in an in-person or hybrid class must submit their vaccination status. The specific instructions are available on our facts page, so if you need help, please let us know. And we are moving on to the facts, I believe. Thank you, Christy. Um, so we'll cover a couple question, common questions that we have received from students. And so the first question is, does taking an OU course guarantee admission to SJSU? And so taking a OU course does not guarantee admission to SJSU. Although students may take prerequisite courses to help qualify for degree programs, there are no guarantees for admission. And question number two, what to expect on the first day of class? 
So if you are enrolled in a course, uh, just be prepared to get started in your course. If you're looking to enroll in a course on uh, enroll into the class on the very first day, please be sure to attend uh, the class if it's uh, in session um, and you want to re request for an add code as well. And so please continue attending the course while you wait for the um, official uh, to be officially added into the course roster. Uh, the third question is, how do I clear a prerequisite to take a class if I took that course somewhere else? So you can clear a prerequisite by um, presenting your unofficial transcript of your coursework to your professor. Your professor can then provide you with an ad code uh, to enroll in that class if it is uh, if it does cover the prerequisite. And so please uh, connect with your professor uh, to get that um, approved. Uh, question number four, can international students take OU courses? Uh, so yes, uh, but there are some extra steps for international students. Um, if you are in a F1 status international student at another university, um, you will need to speak with your DSO to see if it's okay to take courses at SJSU. Um, and so if you're an international student who does not have an F1 visa, uh, you can take courses um, however, taking an OU course does not make you eligible for F1 status as, as it is not a degree program. Uh, question number five, what if I want to add a class that has a wait list? Uh, so Christy covered this a little bit in her slides. So if you wish to add a course um, that has a wait list, you can add yourself to that wait list um, and you can do that through my SJSU. Um, and if you're not able to add yourself to the wait list, uh, you can ask the professor, they can also add you as well. And then the last question is, how do I get access to SJSU facility for my class that meets in person? Um, so you will need a student ID card to get access into the building. Um, you will receive instructions on how to obtain your student ID card. Um, but if you need further assistance, you can always reach out to us. And so with that, I'll go into our, con our contact slide. So that way, if you need to reach out to us um, after today, um, here are all the different ways that you can connect with us. Um, right now, again, because SJSU uh, is experiencing some technical difficulties with their website, um, if you have any trouble accessing um, or getting anything um, on our website, please just send us an email at cpg, cpge at sjsu.edu. Um, that may be the fastest way to get uh, to connect with us if you're having any issues accessing anything on our website. And so uh, with that, uh, we did want to do a quick survey uh, for everyone just to see how um, you all learned or heard about our info session. And so if everyone can um, quickly select an answer for the poll, we will then move on to our Q&A after. I will give it another couple more seconds. All right, so let's go ahead and end the poll there. Um, looks like a majority of you have received an email inviting you to the info session. Um, and also there the SJZ event calendar and some other forms as well. So thank you again, everyone. Um, I'll go ahead and pass it on to Trang to um, get us started into the Q&A. Trang, I think you're on mute. I am so sorry. Um, before we uh, host this uh, presentation, we did send our survey uh, and we get some of the uh, question back. So I'm going to start with it first before we open for us to uh, chat directly. Um, some of the questions that I have is, uh, is there a good way for me to approach professor to make it more easy for me to get into the class I want? 
What can I do to prepare for August 21st when the OU registration open? Um, right now, the professor, I know that they are not checking the email until close to um, next week. So hopefully uh, by the next couple of days, you're going to hear back from the professor. But if you still not uh, have it, her hearing from the, the teacher, you may want to um, check back on Monday because that's when all of the class staff and also the instructor may uh, are in the process uh, of finalizing their roster because they want to get in um, get the final roster for all of the matriculated students first and they will consider whether there's open space to allow open university to the class. Um, if in person class you can come to the classroom to meet with the professor and check with them, so maybe you have a a, a chance to. Uh, please note that um, when you haven't signed up for the class, uh, you may don't have the ID cards to access the building. But for those who were DQ from spring twenty three. You can use your current ID card in order to access all of the building, and you don't have to ask for a new car. It come with your current car. Uh, my other question is: What is the timeline for enrolling for classes? Uh, in the past, I can see it take about some class that not impacted. You can get right away uh, within the first day. But I can see sometimes vary from one day to two weeks. Uh, so please don't uh, be discouraged because sometimes that the matriculation student drop the class, they reshuffle their schedule and there's slot coming up for you. Um, I open up the session for anyone care want to talk to us post any question for the room? Well, I, I have a quick question. Um, so you're saying we can't access the buildings without an SJS UID. Uh, I have two ad codes. How do how am I, but I don't have an ID. How am I going to be able to get into the building? No, uh, have you signed up for the class yet? I Okay, that's where there, there's a ton of confusion here for me. Yeah, I have two. I have ad codes for both the lectures. I can't get ad codes for the labs, which I do not understand. I can't sign up anywhere because I can't add, access the registration form until Monday. Yes. So how can I? How can I? What? Uh, um, on that is that a in person class or the online class? No, they're both in person classes. So in that case, I think that like on Monday, there's a lot of students going in and out of the buildings and then you can follow them to your classroom until you are officially enrolled into the class. Then you can upload your picture. I have a link on our website to instruct students how to upload their picture so that they can request the ID card. You can pick up the ID card from the Bursa office also whenever you are successfully sign up for the class. Regarding the lecture and the lab section, you will have to continue to check with the lab instructor so that they can give you an ad code. I know that there are several lab instructor at different times, so you have to choose the one that fits your schedule and ask for that instructor. Well, that I understand perfect. that, but I'm being told that I that I can't get an ad code for the lab because the labs are near capacity, but I have the ad code for the lecture. Aren't they supposed to be concurrent? And that makes no sense to me. So can you name that angle? Um, unfortunate. Which department is it? Um, it's probably nutrition and chemistry. Wait, do we know those angles are equal? There's two different ones. I have a nutrition science class or a food science class, and then I have a, a, a biochem class. Yeah, unfortunately, because like the lecture is in the auditorium. Right. So, so it, but a, like I'm asking, 
like if we wanted to figure out congruence, we would need to know something about could, like, could I ask somebody sides, that right? to... so is there any angle we know something oh thank you so um because the the the, the lecture they they are in the big hall the big authority auditorium so that they have more capacity than the lab but if the lab is near four, I'm sorry that like you may want to try another section no I I don't care what section it is I I just it doesn't make sense to have to, to not be able to take the lab when you're taking the lecture that makes absolutely no sense to me so if you don't get the access or uh, the, the ad code for the lab, I don't think that you can sign up for that particular class because it have to be two, two sections, the lab I, and that's, the lecture That's together. my point. I have ad codes for both lectures. I was so I'm so I would assume that because I have an ad code means I have a spot, which would also mean that there should be a corresponding spot for the labs. Uh, unfortunately, the lab and the lecture are taught maybe by two different instructors and many instructors. I know that a lot of instructors teaching the class lab are different than the instructor teaching the lecture. So they probably didn't talk to each other or maybe because they one lab may be full, but the other lab may be open. So you have to specifically ask the instructor for the, the lab that open. I, I understand that I, I have been and I'm being told that there's no room, which makes no sense. I've sent the I sent the lab professor the ad code from the lecture and they're like, sorry, there's nothing we can do. And that makes no sense to me. If you have 80 people in your lecture, you should have 80 spots in the corresponding labs. Correct or no? Yeah, that's correct. I so, I I would imagine that like both of the instructor doesn't like uh, communicate to each other. So, okay. yeah. All right. Is it possible to upload the link to how you would go about getting an, an ID? Uh, sure. I can send it to you. Perfect. In the Thank you. Yeah. Hi, I had a quick question. So I just graduated from SJSU last semester. I still have my portal open but I am not able to add classes for right now for spring. What, how do I change that so that I can add them in my portal? I think the registrar office have to change your academic status uh -huh. from regular student to OU student. So it's so, Open University? That's Yeah, they have to change it for you. So could you please fill out the form? Yes. That, uh, yeah, true. the open open university registration form and send it to the registrar office on Monday. Is the register where is the where can I find the registrar office? Is it just the open university registrar office or the no? Number? It's our registrar office. The form is a docu sign form and it's set up to send send it to the registrar if you complete the form. Okay. So you don't have to particularly type in the email address. It's on already automatically uh, set up to send it to them when you complete the form. Okay. Can you repeat where I could find it? Because I'm I'm looking uh, for it on your forms, like in Open University, and I don't think it's there. Uh, the web our current website is maybe down. Let me um paste. We have to paste the. Let me. Can you email us in the cpge at sjsu.edu so that we can send the form directly to you? Um, I would have to point out that uh, currently, because I, uh, last Friday, SJSU have a power outage, mm -hmm. and um, we are trying, our IT team trying to recover all of the server at SJSU. So a lot of our uh, website or our forms on the server, it depends on the which server is recovering. So um, a lot of them, many of them cannot accessible right now. So I hope that by the end of this week it's all resolved. But it's that that's that's in the current situation that we we are trying to cope with with whatever we 
can deal with the current situation. So it may be delayed. So please uh, be patient with us and email us at cpge at sjsu.edu so that we can send our internal link so that you can prep up whatever you need to do before Monday. Um, can you type out the email in the chat? Because I didn't really catch it. I just posted it there. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm trying to enroll into open university classes, but I'm pretty sure other people have also said on the chat that they're confused about it because going through the steps, um, it's I go to select the term. The only term that's coming up is summer 2023. Is that what I'm supposed to select because I'm trying to go into fall classes like start of the semester? But the only term that's coming up is summer 2023. I don't see any fall 2023. So I'm confused as to what's going on. Like, does that mean I can't take fall classes or? Everything's going to start on Monday because right now the open registration haven't been uh, uh, opened yet. The class start on Monday. So, so I should read about it right now until Monday. I should log in early and then it will say yeah. turn off for 2023. Yeah, um, but like, have you take a look at the what type of uh, student you are? Because it may you may have to go to different channel, because for uh, I um I was a former SJC student who got disqualified, so I'm trying to go through Open University to earn back my 2.0 GPA. So the, I already clicked on that, and it's not helpful at all because it just gives a form. And when you click on the form, it doesn't even open. So then I went through like this other like thing that popped up where it says um, like it takes you step by step. It asks you a bunch of questions and I answered those questions and it it gave me pretty clear steps on to how to enroll into Open University. But the only thing that's coming up is like I don't see any fall 2023. So it's like frustrating because it's like, how do we know if we're able to take fall classes when it just says summer 2023? I have to go back to ask you, are you been DQ from the spring semester or prior to spring semester? Can you repeat that one more time? Sorry. Uh, was you DQ in the spring 23 or prior semester? Well, Which semester you were DQ? Because, well, oh, huh? Which semester am I trying to take or which semester I got disqualified from? Which semester you were disqualified? Well, it was from um, last semester where I got the email that I was just, I was a disqualified student. So I'm pretty sure that means all yeah. I said was for like fall 2020, like the start of the second year, because this would be my second year attending SJSU. It would have to be like through Open University to be like to be able to go back into becoming an actual SJSU student. Yeah. So if you receive an email from the registrar office, you are be in DQ from spring 2023. In that email, there's a link that you fill out your information that you intend to take the class for fall. So by filling that out, the registrar office will activate you for the fall semester. So this way, in your category, you have to go back to your email that you receive from the registrar. And I believe that there's a form, the, doc, uh, the Google Docs form. We post that form on our website also, but unfortunately, the website is down right now. You can't access to that form. But if you go back you from your email that you receive from the registrar office, the link is within the content of the body. Am I clear? Because yeah. like they, when they got your information that you intended to sign up for a class for fall, they will activate your account for fall semester. And that's when you will see the fall 2023 option in your my SJSU. So without that step, you cannot go further. No, because I'm right now looking at the email I got um, and it says, 
For more information about Open University, please visit. The only website linked on there is the homepage of Open University's website. There's no other website where it tells you, okay, I want to take, um, I want to go through Open University. Like the person who emailed me did not put any of that in there. So it's kind of like confusing as to why, like what's going on. It's not the website, it's the, the link to the form. They, they have some verbiage say that you fill out this form to say that you intend to take class for fall. So it's, uh, 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 um, it's not a website, it's the uh, Google Doc form. And again, if you want to trace that back, you can also email us so we can um, help you uh, directly you to that form. Um, so I guess I did complete the form. I found the form right now, but does that mean until Monday I'll get access to select a fall term or like it's not giving me access? Um, because they, you fill out the form doesn't mean that your your profile is changed because they until one of the staff in the registrar office changed that. Uh, let me set so I need to email the registrar office then. Because that I, form, that form will, yeah, that form was set up directly to the registrar office. So then, but I should email them because I haven't gotten any response. And I also did email Open University, like the um, email you guys pasted in the group chat. I did email you guys and I haven't gotten any response. Uh, when did you email us? Is it within uh, the last day or this morning? We will um Give us like around like uh, 24 hours to respond to your email, please. Yeah. Um, so that's what I'm confused because it's like, it's like worrying because Monday, like it's like you have to do a whole lot and then it's just confusing to like figure out and the page for like register is not helpful at all. <laughs> like um, it doesn't give us a proper, like the video that's on there, it's like a video from like when the website was like in the past, now it's modified and it's completely different. Yeah. Excuse me. I wanted to add on to that. Um, so just to give it be clear, this weekend we should get our, our status change in our portal by you guys after we email you, right? Like mm -hmm. uh no, that's go to the registrar office. We don't have access to change a student uh academic profile. Oh, okay. So yeah, when we get the e the the link for the form, we'll fill that out and then on the first day of school we'll go to each class and get their access code and that's where we can add it into our portal, correct? Uh, should be yeah that should be the, the way how it is is that the uh, only form we need to fill out or is there any other form that's the only form okay. because for you guys who are dq in spring 2023 the registrar office will exit with they set up the account and you just mm -hmm. have to go to you just have to fill out that form and go to class ask for the permission number and then you go into my SJSU to mm -hmm. add your class just like no and the first term, yeah. Okay, okay, and one more question. I, I'm, a, I'm a graduate student. I graduated already. I'm taking these classes to prepare for my master program. Is there any other form that I need to fill out personally? Uh, are you taking? You already graduate, right? Yes, I graduated. The classes I'm taking right now are accounting classes, and but um, they're like at the two hundred level or undergrad level. I'm not sure. It's like one twenty a, one twenty one a. Those so are not 200 level, right? Yeah, uh, if not 200 level, if you graduate already, did you graduate from spring? Oh, spring, spring, I just graduated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that you have to fill out a form to submit it to the registrar office, the registration form. The that same form? Registration form, yes. Registration form. It's the same form you mentioned, right? Uh, it's two different forms because uh, oh, okay. I, I think that Heidi mentioned because she's uh, in a different category. Yeah. You are in a different uh, uh, position. So that's why your form is the registration form. Okay. The other student is the registrar form. It's different. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thank you. So don't, uh, I, I kind of confused when you mentioned, uh, I, I have to understand when did you graduate or when did you last attend mm -hmm. San Jose State in order to give the correct yeah, direction? Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. I have one more clarifying question. So I hear like, so there's two classes I specifically want to take, um, but I heard like I looked 
through open universities like to search up classes and most of the classes that I want to take there's like no longer um space like open it's kind of on wait list so you're talking about permission codes does that mean I have to email the professor to get a permission code to be added to the wait list or what does that exactly mean uh yes you have to ask the uh I think that it depends on the class whether they are uh set up a permission number or consent required so if you are able if when you have the access if you are able to put your name on the waiting list go ahead and do so so that it will be um if any one drop from the class the next person in line will be pushed into the enroll status so if you have access to put your name on the waiting list please do so otherwise contact the instructor and ask the instructor to put your name on the waiting list for you Okay, so I seen the chat also. So pretty much on August 21st, we're able to enroll and like select their classes and add it to our cards and then like go ahead through with the classes because right now I'm trying to add classes to my cart, but it doesn't work maybe because like, you know, I, I can't select fall term or anything. So the 21st should be like the day we can because it's kind of confusing because 21st like everything just kind of opens up and then by Tuesdays, like you have to be ready to go. Uh, remember that when you attend class, there's a set day that prior to the beginning of the class, we close registration right now. I think that today, starting tomorrow to the rest of the week, even matriculated students, they don't have access to enroll to the class because we are trying to set up everything, run last roster and the instructor run their syllabus and a lot of activity happen in these three days. So right now, even the matriculated student, they cannot enroll. So these are the like frozen phase that any activity that have to be stopped in order for the new semester. So just wait until Monday. It's the same way with matriculated student right now too. I think there's a question in the chat um, that says, is dual enrollment the same? Uh, do, does dual enrollment use quick admit as well when it, when it comes to creating a student account? Uh, no, dual enrollment, you have to contact the registrar office because they have a different system. Uh, I would imagine that you are taking class from one of the other CSU right now, right? So um, the registrar office is going to have to coordinate with your home school in order to calculate your full load for the semester. So the answer is no. You have to contact the registrar office for that. Uh, where for uh, where who in the register should I contact? I think okay. that, um, let me, the general registrar, um, yeah, Susie, yeah, please send us an email so that I can connect you, we can connect you directly to the staff from the registrar office, yeah. Okay, so I sent you the CPGE, right? Yes. Okay, cool, cool. thank you. Thank you. Okay. On the first day of school on the Monday, who are who can we contact if we need help? Like advisors, what advisors can we go to? Because we're like open university, so I don't. Before I used to go to the business building for advising, but I don't think I can go there anymore. Um, that's why you may want to try to go first because I think that all of the advisor now um mm -hmm. is aware that they need to have all of the uh open university student group. Uh, from the spring semester to get back in. So I would want to, I, I think that you should try to go to talk with that group first because I they are aware of that. Okay, perfect, thanks, sir. thank you. You're welcome. I have a question real quick. Uh, so some of it was answered in the chat. So I attended uh, SJSU. I can't remember if it was Open University or not, um, but this was, back in like early 2007 and so from the chat uh, student id is deactivated now so it needs to be activated 
but it's going to be the same student ID that I use now? Yes. Okay, is there a way to get that student ID activated before Monday so I don't have to scramble with everything? So I'm able to, to kind of log in, not enroll, I'll wait till Monday to enroll, but so I can log in before then? Could you please go back and try it on maybe Friday? Because I don't believe that the system is working right now. So um, you can, could you email me um, on the CPGE email so that we can send you a link so that you can try to activate your. Okay. Okay, the email that's that's on the screen right now. CPGE yes. At SJSU. Yes. Okay, yes. I'll do that. Thank yeah. you. You you may have to try several times because I as far I, I I know that currently the system is down. So uh maybe either one time on or maybe on during the weekend you you may want to try it okay i'll do that if it doesn't work online is there like a physical location that i can go into on monday so i can just do this in person and have them reactivate my account uh the easiest way is to submit the registration form with the class information to the yeah. registrar office and when they sign up you to the class, it's going to be automatically activated. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, I have a question. I'm oh, sorry. So I have a question that I'm disqualified from spring 2023. So uh, I checked that the form will open on for the registration on Monday. Uh, so my question is, can I enroll before before the uh, registration? Uh, no, it's have to start on August 21st. Okay, because I am uh, like I am asking from the instructor. So I got uh, the permission number. So I can't enroll, right? Uh, no, you can't because the, 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 the system is not open for enrollment right now. Okay. We close it already. Yeah. Um, I can take the classes, right? On the 21st? As long as you have the permission number from the instructor on the 21st, you can sign up and take the class. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, when you just want, want, want people to know that when you sign up for the class, all of the access will be automatically go with the enrollment. For example, except for online material, if your instructor posts online uh, or if you are uh, taking an online class, the access to Canvas for all of the instruction and class participation gonna be in gonna be activated at the same time of the your enrollment. So everything technically gonna count from the moment that you enroll for the class. So please take um, take a look. And uh, at that point, even the for those students who are new to San Jose State, if they want to have a student ID, you cannot ask for an ID until you enroll into the class. So I just want to people to pay attention to that uh, detail so that you don't be confused. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Evan, I think that. You are earlier. Thank you. Um, so I enrolled in 2020 and I got accepted, but I decided to go somewhere else instead. Um, so do I already have a student ID? Yes, you already have a student ID. And I believe that's what one of our uh, student, one in our six student category. And you can follow the step that listed there on okay. our website yeah all right all right thank you mm, thank you Trang, there's a question Hi. for um when on monday does enrollment start um is it 8 a.m or 9 a.m i would say 9 a.m ajit Okay, I just have two different questions. One, you just mentioned about registration opening 
So I'm just wondering, you're saying it was opening 9 a.m., but the SJSU website says 7 a.m. So does it open at a different time for Open University? Um, it's not open at a different time, but like when enrollment, just like enrollment appointment at San Jose State, they uh, uh, set up different groups so that we don't crash the system at one. So okay. at different time, yeah, we kind of like deliver the traffic, like like <laughs> so that we people can have access like at different time. Okay, my other question now is in regards to accessing the facilities. So I'm a recent graduate student. I graduated three months ago. So will my current student ID work or do I need to get a new ID card? You don't need to give, get a new ID. You can use the current one. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone have any question for us? Uh, yeah, um, just question real quick. Um, as an open university student, are we still able to like do on campus activities like clubs and stuff like that? I know we can't use the gym, but um, yeah. Um, that is an additional cost for you to um, access the gym. I believe that they, when you contact the front desk over there, they're going to show you a different option for you, um, whether a monthly uh, activity with everything or just different activity, different price uh, rate. You can contact um, the event center. Okay. Yeah. Um is what about like clubs and stuff? Can we still do those? Uh, for student club, uh, you can contact the club because like each of the club have different policy and I am not aware of all, but uh, most of the service on campus uh, with open university uh, students, they allow with uh, additional um, cost or some type of restriction. So you may want to directly contact those uh, offices for further information. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, as an open university student, uh, would we be able to, to get the AEC accommodations? Uh, what is the AUC? It's the, the disability oh, uh, yes. accommodations. Sorry, yes, yes, you can. Um, we have the contact, you, you, you can contact uh, them directly. Um, that department? Yes, do you have the contact number for that? Or we um, do have the, uh, we can send you in an email. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, should, I, should I email? Yes, uh, CPGE, the... yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'll ask You're for welcome. that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I have one other question. Mm -hmm. So you're mentioning that the registry, the open university form is a DocuSign. So does that mean that that's going to be digitally submitted or do I have to go in person to submit the form? Digital. Digitally, okay. yeah, yeah. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. In the chat, it seems like there was a little confusion about the form, and so um, maybe we can uh, quickly cover that uh, for a second, Trey. Um, in the form, um, it, the, the registration form, it, it's not like an application or whatnot. Um, the form In the form, uh, when it's available, it's going to ask students what class you're trying to enroll in. And so you will have to log in all of the classes that you're trying to enroll in for the semester onto that form. And so um, when you're filling out the form, you don't need to have you don't need to put in permission numbers. The instructor's signature on the form will count as that. And so if you decide to use the registration form or if that is 
uh, the instructions based on your student type. Um, just make sure to have the class that you're trying to enroll in handy. Um, that form will ask for that. And so once that um, once you submit the form, it will route to the instructor or instructors, depending on how many class you're trying to enroll in. Um, it will route for their signatures. Uh, once your instructors have signed the form, it will then be routed to the registrar's office for processing. Um, and processing can take up to about a week or so um, during the for, uh, during this uh, the start of the semester. And so as you all are waiting for um, your registration forms to uh, to finish process uh, to be finished processing from the registrar's office, uh, make sure you continue to attend class that way you don't miss anything. Um, and you can always communicate with your professor as well. So that way they are also in the loop of where your registration is at. And so hopefully that cleared up uh, some confusion about the registration form. Um, I have a question about the registration form you just talked about. Uh, yes, go ahead. So in the form you're you're talking about how we need to put the classes we plan to enroll in and we do not need any kind of permission numbers. But you said that we need instructor signature. So doesn't that mean we need to print out the form, get their signature? Um, so DocuSign, um, so when you're filling out a form through DocuSign, it's sent digitally and instructors will sign digitally. Um, so th there's no need to print out the forms or do a formal submission. So when so, we add the class, it would be sent to them automatically because we're going to add their class into the form? Correct. So when you're filling out the form and you're putting in the instructor, uh, let's say you're trying to enroll in bio 1A, you'll have to put in the instructor's name who's teaching that class and their email address on the form. And so then it would then be routed to the professor for signing. If you're not sure what your instructor's email address is, um, I recommend referring to the SJSU directory. Hopefully that helps. Um, do you know what, Kua? I think that I can post the link directly to the registration form right here so that maybe we can uh, put up so that we can show people uh, a little bit right here uh, in the chat. That's where the power form can we put up and share on the screen. Um, the last link that power form DocuSign, is there any way that we can share with people so that we can? Hey, so is the DocuSign form the registration form or is it two different things? Uh, that's the one form. DocuSign is the software that we use and the registration form is the name of the form that you use for register for a class because we use DocuSign for drop form. Uh, late app, late drop. So um, it's just a software that we use. This is the registration form. On the first page, we have some of the instruction for you. So you have to go through all of that um, in order. So it also give you the last number three right here is for people who, who sign up for a graduate level. Uh, when you scroll down your information, your name, your email, and then the instructor of class one and email address, instructor plus two, if you have multiple classes. And here are where that they set up to go for the signature or permission to set up to, to sign up for the class. So they allow you, you have the spot for up to five classes, but you if you take only one, you just need to fill one. After okay. that, when you do the submit button, we oh. cannot do right now because like, we have to fill that out first. When you do okay. the submit button at the bottom, they got to go to a second page that have the class information. So you have to type in the class subject and the number, like for example, math uh, 31A, and the five digit class number, which you have to look on the schedule of class. So when you sign up and submit, 
it's automatically routed to the office or the instructor whoever had to sign up for the form. Okay. Uh, so what if I put, um, for example, three different math professors? Would it just give me the first one who's available or how would that work? Uh, you mean you put three different professor for one class? Yeah. Because uh, I'm assuming some of them won't have room, right? Mm -hmm. So if they don't have room, they will say no, they will reject it. So the form, if they decide, because there's option for them to say no or yes or no, so it's going to... It's gonna take if like they all complete. I think the registrar office will return this form if like you have multiple instructor sign up for allow you to take in one class, and they will have they either reject you or they will go back and ask you which section that you plan to take. So okay. I I I think that I have never have a situation that the student asked for multiple instructor of the what class. So, but like I, I, I will know for sure that they will have to come back to you and ask which section that you want to add to if you get the permission from many instructor. Okay, I see. Um, and so when will the registration form be available? Monday. Monday, okay. Mm -hmm. And where can I find that? I'm sorry? The Where can I find the form? Oh, on our website. Or you can use, if you save this uh, URL on your computer, you can use it. Oh, oh on this Monday. form right here? Yeah, this is the direct link to the form. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So clarifying question, Everyone who's attending Open University has to fill out this form in order to get access to the classes they want to take or in order to get like the professor to agree that you're taking their classes? Uh, no, Heidi, if you are filling out the form for attending, uh, attend to return to San Jose State for fall, the order form will give you the access to directly enrolling. This is for for the student who need to use the form. What do you mean about who need to use the form? You, you remember that we have six category of students that mm -hmm. we listed from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there are certain group of students who need to use that form. So in my, like my position, I don't have to use that form or do I since I'm a disqualified student? Uh, you don't have to use that form. Let me find out if I have the access to the other message so that I can post it here so that you can see what is the difference between the form for the registrar office. Can we click on that? Um, yeah, do, do, it, do it open right now. Uh, you need to open that one. Here. Oh, let me. Sorry, Kua. The form you just clicked on right there where it says submit this form by August 28th, I did that form. And then it just says, we also have to do the open university registration form. When you click on that form, for me, it doesn't open up. So I don't know if it might be the website that's crashing. Yeah. Um. Can you please do me? Yeah, this is the form that we are talking about for the DQ student. So this, is, this form was set up by the registrar office. And once you fill out all of the information, they will process in the back end. And on August 21st, you can just sign up to a class just like your previous semester because you already prepare for this, this step. You don't have to fill out the other form. You just have to go to the my SJSU and sign up for class. Well, okay. okay, so total sense because I was very confused because we were talking about permission codes. We were talking about like you need to do these forms in order to get access. And then I like I feel like now that's very clear for like disqualified students. So pretty much we just have to do that form. Yes, like, yes. Now but like now I feel like more better. And like yeah. I know what's going on now. That that's why I talk because I think that we mentioned about two different forms for 
many different group right here. So I think that maybe we can just pull up to so that you can tie with the visualize what form is which, which form is which. Okay, so as a DQ student, you only need to complete that form right there that you clicked on. I have to say that for DQ student from spring 2023, yeah. if yeah. you were DQ previous semester, there's another yes. round. Yes, this yeah. this form, the just the pink form, the form in Google Docs is the only form that DQ student from spring 23 right. should go through. Yes. Right. Okay, so I completed that form. Do I still need to complete the DocuSign form or no? You don't. Okay. You have to register by August 28th. Remember that. Otherwise, the after the late enrollment, after that, the late enrollment going to kick in. So please be mindful of the timeline. That section that in front of you right here is for particularly DQ students. So you just have to scroll down and check every step that we list in here. So the general DocuSign form, there's only one form, right? Whether it's for the like a post back or for the open university with no student ID or with student ID or. That's correct, Jennifer. Okay, if you, you don't have a student ID, just you just leave it blank. Okay. Uh, your personal section, personal information section will cover uh, to identify uh, whether you were in the system or not. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. After filling that disqualification form, I don't have to like fill the DocuSign, right? And I can enroll in the subjects uh, which I have the permission numbers, right? Yes. Okay, so I have to fill this on 21st and after that I can enroll for my classes, right? For the form, for the DQ form, uh, yes. you can fill it out now. But okay, for registration, you have to wait until August 21st. Okay, so registration form is necessary, right? It is I, necessary. Registration, not registration form. For registration process, okay, where you go to your my SJS to put your class in your car to enroll, that okay. has to be done on twenty first. But the DQ form from the registrar, you can fill it out now. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank mm -hmm. you. So, so what if um, like there's multiple uh, professors teaching a, a class, um, like what would you, would you just have to choose one? And uh, what happens if you choose the one that has the full class? Like do you get another opportunity to maybe choose one that has like spots available? I would suggest that to choose the, uh one with the list enrollment right now to have a better chance because as you know that San Jose State is a very uh, impacted school and there are certain very popular class that is hard to get in. So I would imagine that um, you will have a better chance if you sign up for a class that have a lot of seats open. Uh, are, you, are you able to, so you're able to see like how many seats are Oh. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. On on the the schedule of class link, you you will be able to see whether it's full or not, or even go to your uh my SJSU search for a class. You can see how many space available. Okay, all right. Thank you. You're welcome. I think there's a question from Jasmine about um, if they want to retake a class, how would that work? Um, is that is that something they'll have to go through the registrar's office? Correct. Um, I will put the uh, registrar office uh, email right here. Thank you, Trini. Very um, good. Okay. Uh, Evan, I, I see I your question. Um, the, the presentation today uh, will be shared with everyone along with the recording. It will be sent to the email that you use to register for the info session.
uh, Ajit? Okay, so I just want to make sure. So the open university form, that's the only form that needs to be signed, right? Or do I have to sign some on any other additional forms? No, you don't. Just that one form. Okay, thank you. Mm. One last call. I open to the last person. If everyone wants to ask us anything before we close the session. Um, real quick. Uh, so in your experience, if the if a class has like fifty seats open, is that relatively safe to get in? I would think so. Okay. But right. um, again, um, just like um, the instructor have full permission, full authority to whether accept a uh, open university student or not. So we don't have any control with the department or the professor that we cannot ask them to accept extra students because of the uh, we want more students. So please work with the instructor. To okay, yeah, them. I have. I've been emailing her. Yeah. Okay, all right. I, I post my personal email in the chat just in case that anyone want to uh, contact me directly because I have several uh, questions that whether they can contact me. So um, please uh, feel free to email me if you want. And I have to say that I don't have any knowledge on academic uh, information. Like for example, if you want to check with me whether which class you would take, you need to take in order to improve your GPA. I don't have access to check your academic progress or I have knowledge, I don't have any knowledge working with like uh, as an academic advisor. So I am willing to connect you to the department that have more uh, knowledge to help you with, but I'm here with my team to help you with all of the process that you need and feel free to contact us to that CPGE email or my direct email so that we can uh, provide you with more information. Um, so also uh, before this ends, as far as uh, prerequisites go, so I was told that I just work with the professor. So I've already emailed the professor my official transcripts and she's seen them and approved them and everything. But I wanna make sure, so I'm not stuck last second. Is there anywhere else that I need to send those transcripts to be able to like? Unless you taking graduate level course, you will need to attach that transcript with your registration form Otherwise, you don't need to submit the register uh, your transcript anywhere. Okay, it's just um, just work with the professor in that case. That's correct. Okay, all right, thank you. Hey, so earlier you were talking about how teachers aren't really looking at their emails until when was it? The uh, hopefully this weekend. Okay. I know a lot of instructor like uh, pull up their cluster on the day before. The day of. Okay, thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Any other last minute questions from students here today? If you think of anything else, please feel free to connect with us. Um, our contact information again is here um, on the slide. Um, we understand that you may have very specific uh, situations um, and you may need, uh, you know, specific help based on, um, you know, based on what your status might be. And so connect with us um, and we can help walk you through uh, the registration process as well. And so uh, thank you, everyone, for attending the info session today. I know we went a little bit over our time, uh, but thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for asking uh, really great questions. Um, the presentation and the recording will be shared um, later this week. Um, so that way, if you need a refresher on anything that was presented today, um, you'll have that uh, at the end of this week. And so 
um, with that, we'll go ahead and end the presentation then. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good semester, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you.